Hey, what's up guys? This is Chris from weartesters.com. Today we have the performance review on the Adidas Eros 5 Boost. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. All right guys, so this is the traction pattern here. They went with a typical wave bone pattern for the forefoot and everywhere else they just have these little kind of rubber nubs. And surprisingly enough, this setup was just totally awesome. I was very skeptical about this section here, especially it being on the forefoot. It's pretty much right where you use a lot of pressure points when you're making cuts and movements. But it didn't affect anything in a negative way whatsoever. Um, the, the court really had to be pretty dirty uh, with dust and things like that for you to need to wipe. So if you're playing indoors, it's gonna be a really great solid option. And then even outdoors on this particular court, uh, these things actually stuck to the floor just as good, which I thought was great. Um, again, not something that I was expecting. I was expecting pretty lackluster traction with this section here, but everything just worked really well. I don't know if it was mostly because of this or if it was a combination. I didn't really want to question it. I was just happy that I got really great traction. One thing I will say is that if you do plan to wear these outdoors primarily, um, the rubber is a little bit on the soft side, so you probably will burn through that pretty quickly. But if you're an outdoor hooper, no matter what, like you just don't have you know, indoor access, um, it's just something that you're probably already used to dealing with. So if this is a shoe for you, then you're at least gonna get solid traction for the time being. All right guys, so we have full length boost here for the cushion and the heel area was just awesome. You could see the boost through the forefoot underneath the translucent sections and that's carried by this uh, foam frame. This is just made out of their standard EVA, something they used to use for all of their cushion uh, for all of their past models. Now because the uh, forefoot is encased in this EVA, you're getting less kind of bounce or response with the boost, um, but you can still feel it. It's still great. It's not quite as awesome as the runners if you've ever experienced boost in one of their running shoes, um, but for a basketball shoe, I think that it's a good start. And in my opinion, I thought it was pretty comfortable. Just keep in mind that the boost is a little bit firm. When you first put them on, you're gonna need just a little bit of breaking time, just kind of, you know, activate it. The more pressure that you push on this stuff, the more it's gonna kind of boost and propel you back. Um, it's just a really wicked cushion system. I really like it and I can't wait to see how they utilize it in future models. Now their materials are gonna vary depending on the colorway. Uh, this particular one is the only one available that I'm aware of in the US as of right now. And it's basically just a synthetic shell. Um, as you can see, it's just a, it's a crease monster. So as soon as you wear these, it's gonna look just like this. It's durable in a sense that it's not going to rip or tear, uh, but this color that you see on there will scrape off very easily. I've seen plenty of pairs where they have just like white uh, streaks all over and it's from just, you know, normal play. If you're a slasher and things like that, you drive in the lane all the time, expect your roses to look pretty beat up after about two games. But again, it's durable in the sense that it's not gonna rip or tear on you. Um, it's gonna support you fully. So, you know, for that, it's pretty good. As far as their fit goes, they fit me perfectly. They fit me true to size. My toe is right at the edge here. However, I'm hearing some people going up half a size, some people going down half a size. So what I'd recommend when that's the case is to go in store, try them on for yourself, and hopefully you find a pair that works for you. As far as their lockdown is concerned, I had no problems whatsoever. Uh, one of the best features on the rows, especially the past two models, the four and the 4.5 has been their lockdown. Um, it's just like a really great kind of like it wraps over your foot perfectly feeling and these do just that. The only complaint that I have is on my left shoe, this area here, just, I don't know what it is. It just wasn't breaking in and it was giving me a lot of pain during play. Um, it, it does it even to this day. I've been trying to break these in for a couple weeks now and it's just not working out for me. It could just be me, but for whatever reason, it just causes some discomfort. And then the back area here was perfect. You have this TPU uh, frame here. It's gonna keep everything locked in, not shifting side to side. So once you get them on, you lace them up, you're pretty much good to go. They do have sprint web, which is their basic mesh system. It's underneath all of these perforations and it works fairly well. Uh, nothing to really complain about. Um, it's not the best ventilated shoe on the market, but it's also not the worst, not even close. So if you need adequate ventilation, not anything crazy, then this is gonna be a good option. As far as support goes, you get most of that from that fit, that lockdown, and then also the EVA frame, as well as the TPU heel counter. And then as far as torsional support goes, they got this X-bar here. It also gives a little bit of spring back during flex movements. So while you're on toe offs, it'll spring back into shape. It's supposed to kind of help propel you forward. All right, guys, that pretty much takes care of everything. Um, for me personally, I can't say that it's a favorite of mine just because of some of the pain that I keep feeling every time I play in them right around this lateral side. But I seem to be the only one experiencing this pain, so for whatever reason, it just might be an isolated incident for myself. What I did like, though, is the traction and the cushion, two of the best things about this shoe, in my opinion. At $140, it's a decent price point, um, especially for a signature model. 
Uh, one thing that I would say that would make these things unbelievably awesome is if they had the crazy light upper with this D-Rose 5 bottom. But other than that, it's a good go-to shoe. It's ready out the box. So if you are interested in these, you can get them now over at finishline.com. And if you need any more information, you can always go to my site, weartesters.com. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all your support. And until next time, guys, have a good one.